right, so this week and last week we we're talking about heating options for a house. We said there are some options we can heat using electricity, but mainly now in cool weather we still depend on combustion to heat the house. We are very tough to heat our house still. It might look a little bit more sophisticated than it used to. We have uh, five places in the past. Now we have like in a compartment. You don't see it. It's enclosed, so it's not how it used to be. Uh, aren't a lot of places, apartments and stuff, are getting more efficient with heating? They cannot depend on it. Still, because it's pretty, uh, especially during the month, the cold months, it's pretty even now. But now you cannot really fire up the heat pump by itself. The efficiency when, it, when it's outside, when uh, outside when it's at 30, the efficiency goes really down. It becomes cheaper for you to use uh, gas. So still now, if we have heat pumps, it will be very unwise of you to just have heat pump by itself. You need to have a backup as gas or oil because it will not keep up, and if it does work, it will to overwork, and the efficiency will dwindle really bad. But having a heat pump, well, Kill. what? Kill. Oh, she's getting to my spider. What the hell is that thing? Where is it? Is it a spider? Yeah, it looks like it is. Oh, it's a freaking thing. Why are you going to do this? No, don't kill it. Where is it? Yeah, where is it? It's like crunches. Silverfish? Don't kill it. So we're talking about heat pumps. I would say heat pumps are not really reliable. Not re they are reliable, but at cold climate, they cannot keep up. They are, if you ask Bill, he'll tell you some apartments who actually put heat pumps. They tell you it will be efficient. Yes, it will heat, but your electricity bill will go really, really high. So you can live with heat pumps, but you need some kind of subsidy. At least for months, like uh, January and February, you need that. And even now, it's really, really cold. So. Uh, we talked about burning fuel, and uh, we said we burn the fuel in the basement, but we have to transform that heat from the basement or the attic somewhere else. So we either use hot air, or we heat the air in like a minute, run air through a radiator, then have it go all the way to where you want it to go, and, or you can use steam and water. So steam and water is called hydronic. Steam is the first mean for us to heat houses. And these are steam radiators. Next semester we'll go through some calculations on how they are calculated, how much heat they give. Uh, a lot of people love the steam heat. Uh, I personally find it very comfortable, but again, there's a lot of personal purpose. And the second way is hot water, which is the baseboard radiator. They are both called hydronic systems. Question. Is there a So there, there's coal. There are some wood. There are some. Uh, I've seen that people in Vermont. They have uh, they chop a tree once a year. That's it for the entire house. Yeah, that's that's what I do. Yeah. I burn wood. Yeah, you okay. could. You can if you have a very well insulated house and a lot of space. The wood will be fine. Uh, again, in Vermont, it's really easy to do that, and I think it's uh, it's gonna regulate. Uh, but how? What is the population of Vermont? Less than half a million. Yeah, you can fit the entire Springfield in the entire city. <laughs> so it's different population density. We cannot do this here. If everybody chops a tree by by a few years, we'll be out. So 
Over there, I think you are off the chop stick for a few people. That's a big tree. Huh? That's, that's a pretty big tree if you're if just cutting down a tree. Yeah. Hey, well, again, I use at least a bundle every day for the heat. I mean, I, I know we burn, depending on the winter, between like five and nine cords. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is. If it's, for the pellets, I think it's a bag, which is five pounds bag, every time you, for the entire house. But yeah, it's not bad. So I know a couple will come and help each other so you can put it down. But anyways, we can use many things to heat your house. Very different things, depending on how much, what's available. And what can you do? Uh, so hydronic, it's uh, quiet because steam flows by pressure. Uh, if you have good uh, vents, probably you don't even hear much. Probably the building you hear all the hissing. That's the air leaving the radiator. After that, you don't hear anything. It's very, very, very quiet. Uh, it's more efficient in terms of uh, transporting the heat from the basement all the way to the house. Steam is very efficient, it holds a lot of heat. Water holds more heat than air, so it's more efficiency than just hot air and heating the air. Uh, we use mostly natural convection. That's between the radiator and the roof. That's natural convection. From the boiler to the roof, if you have pump and you pump in hot water, that's forced convection. What about steam? Steam is natural convection. There is no pump needed whatsoever, so it's natural. Uh, it can be a standalone system, which means it does not need a lot of electricity. A lot of steam blowers do not need electricity. They can run by themselves, but you're just using pressure. So that's an advantage, especially if, you, if you're living in rural areas where you'll be out of power for a long time, so you can just like fire the, uh, the stove and have some heat. Disadvantages, there are some possible leakage. It happens a lot with hydronic, a pipe freezes, it breaks and leaks. Where do usually the pipe freeze? Where do we put usually the radiators? Huh? Where do we usually place the radiators? Outside of walls, by windows. By windows. So if somebody try to crack a window open, and they forgot the window, the window to open, all there will fall on the radiator, it will freeze that section of the pipe, and boom, it leaks. So the possible leaks are really horrible. Last year, not two years ago, it, for the first time, it uh, got too cold in uh, Louisiana, to the point of freezing, and none of the houses that have any kind of heating system, so it's only very hot. So a lot of houses had frozen pipes. They didn't know to run their water, trickle. Nobody water. is trained in that. They never thought about it. Nobody, that's good, good ideas. That's I do great. it now. I break yeah, it my house. Just there are many things you can do. Have, it, have the water moving, uh, clean the pipes, put some black oil in it. Yeah. I'd say, like, another disadvantage would be that you can't couple it with an AC system. Yeah, that's another disadvantage. You cannot be coupled if you have an AC, it's going to be by itself. Actually, sometimes you can, you can run the hot water or steam through a radiator, a coil, and put that coil in there, handle unit. You could. <coughs> yeah, there are always, yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah, they're all mostly metallic. Actually, they're all metallic, especially the part that's going to emit heat. Why? Because metals are good conductors, so it will Emit more to the yeah. Are these cheaper to install overall? As Which far ones? As material cost goes? Yeah, these are very cheap. Because I'm, I'm thinking it's probably cheaper to uh, solder pipe by the pipe than to. Yeah, have this is very cheap to install. Oh, yeah, and in comparison, not cheap, but cheaper by comparison. Uh, steel radiators are very expensive. Because there are a lot of metal, and that's this is fine. Bless you. Thank you. Possible leak. Radiation location, I think that's also an issue. It takes a lot of space. Steam takes a lot of space. That's like a big piece of furniture. And what's the problem with steam? It gets too hot. If you have children, you want to put some guards around them because if they're calling the dishes steam, it's going to burn. It will burn. It means huh? danger. It's just danger. Steam is, no, it doesn't build a lot of pressure. It doesn't go up too high. You have, uh, you have, you have steam valves. So I had, I had a, a steam radiator in my bedroom, and uh, it was next to my bed. So uh, in the morning, I wake up and I touch the thing, and I'm, 
It's not anything great to wake up. It's really hot. So Some of the old houses. I have to go, yeah. Families, they build a nice little thing around it. With they, a yeah, like a shelf. It's not touching it. Yeah. Easy. I, I looked for those. I couldn't find any, so I had to build my own. Yeah, yeah. that is very nice. nice. Huh? Over the summer, my uh, dad just built a shelf over one, and he had to find a grate to go around it. Yeah, so he just made the kitchen. They sell those uh, grills on uh, Home Depot. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so nice. again, again, they, they take a lot of space, so that piece is going to be really a lot of uh, space in you know, wherever you put it. And also, uh, it's too much heat, so you want to be careful what kind of furniture you put around it. We should uh, slowly cook uh, for the. Radiators, wherever you put the radiator, you cannot put furniture, right? Otherwise, what's the point? So if you have a lot of heat that needs to be emitted, you need a big roll of radiator. Some, some living room, you see the radiator go all around the wall. So that's a little bit annoying. You have to put the furniture apart from it. It's not really like good. So now they do a double-decker radiator with two pipes in it to give more heat. They have bigger ones to give more heat because nobody wants all around the wall radiated. And if you put a couch there, then the heat is not going to circulate as well. Get into furniture or a closet or a shelf or something. So the kitchen can be an issue. And also the possible freeze. If one day you have a cold spell, the you know, house is not very isolated, it will freeze. But what if you freeze uh, your radiant floor? That is a disaster. Hmm. That is a disaster. It did happen to one of the students, actually. While he was in class, uh, his or radiant floor he closed and it leaked and broke. So they ended up just installing uh, electrical radiators. So what you would have to just get a whole new floor though? Well, yeah, it's gonna, it's, it's a process. Daily. You dry the floor, you go in and try to fix it, etc. It takes, uh, they have machines now that, that they pump hot air through the walls to dry it out. It must have had water in it. Yeah, it was, it was running. But I mean, you can do like oil now and all kinds of like all, mediums. Yeah, they do yeah, a lot of things, freeze. yeah. So I did freeze yeah. But it was very altistic. And again, it's always people who do quick fix that will, will take care of it later, and that later never happens. You know, right. like uh, when you boilers have a small leak and you put some paste on it, yeah, I'll deal with it next season. And next season you forget about it, and eventually it will leak and crack in a really bad time. Good luck finding somebody now to do any kind of service call. Because yeah. it gets really cold. Yeah, everybody's so same. busy now. Everybody has like at least four or five service calls, and that's good for business. We like that. May winter, may winter last forever. It's good for us. If you work in the world delivery, <coughs> you have a good business. If you have a lot, your losses now, you can get a job tomorrow. You are the last lesson. So, it's a uh, job security is going to be forever. Again, the climate is getting more extreme, more cold, more hot. So you got to be doing a lot of installs, a lot of repairs, etc. So, it's good for us in the right field. It's good for economy. Huh? It's good for economy. Good for economy, yeah. Let it be. If you want to live in very cold places, let it be. Uh, we're looking for it. Okay. Uh, hydraulic heat emitters, those actually some of them are hot water, some of them are steam, but they have more surface area. <coughs> so if we go back to our equation of, uh, please remember this equation. We can use it a lot. Yes. Surface area is key for the radiator. The more surface area we have, the better. So this is going to give me more surface area to exchange with air. And I can have a smaller one instead of one of those tall ones going all over the place. Here's some kind of placement where you want to place it. Some strategy is different. And here where the art comes, where you want somebody with experience to put things the right way. For example, if you have a kickboard. Kickboard is very, very efficient when you don't have space inside the kitchen. It's kind of it looks like a car radiator, right? And uh, it just, you run hot water through it, and I have a small inducer fan to kick in hot air. So that will be very useful. But again, there's a lot of pressure drop here. Mm -hmm. We'll do a lot of calculation next semester to teach you how do you calculate pressure drop. A lot of people do not do pressure drop, and that's why the system does not work at all. You put things and you, you think, why is it not running correctly? There's some kind of pressure drop. Part is not gonna be the same pressure, right? When we run, Electricity through a wire, a wrong wire, what happens? It will die out. So we'll do some calculation of that. I'm going to give you all the math you need for destroying the proper system. And hopefully, I'll try to simplify it as much as possible. Because again, there's a lot of eyeballing going on in the field, a lot of cookie cutting. And that will, that will, will make you different. 
you know how to put it the math behind it, you know how to calculate on the PSQL, we've been in the for a long time, we'll tell you. Yeah, we, we always just eyeball things and you end up, again, doing a kind of not a very good job. But if you are gonna be paid for a good illustration, that will make you different. And that's why what makes companies have better views than others. So what do we put and why, how much will it cost you? And again, at the end product, people at the end find the, the, the room is uncomfortable, it is noisy, there are leaks, it's on you. It's gonna give your business a bad reputation. And nobody wants to go back and call, yeah, even though you're gonna do it for free with the next time, nobody wants that. People want it done the first time right. So do the calculation early on. So hot water is still a big, a good option to heat things. And now, when we think of radiators, they, are, they come in many shapes and colors. They have maybe something called a convector, which looks like a small little closet as big as this, with a big, huge radiator pumping water through it and a fan. So we're using natural convection, natural uh, force convection to give off more heat faster. So there are many ways to do it, depending on how much money you're willing to put and why. And how do you convince this person that this is actually a better option? Or at least give people options, and it's up to them. Steam, some of the advantages, it's uh, similar to water. It's efficient, convenient, faster heat steam. Once it heats up, it's, you'll get a lot of heat. What is the temperature of uh, steam? Minimum, you have steam. 212, that's the minimum. Yeah. That's the minimum, otherwise it's gonna be water. So steam is 212, so we're gonna come to your radiator at 212, 230, 240, that's a lot of temperature. So it's a very hot radiator. radiator. It drops that heat and becomes water, and it trickles down and goes back to the boiler. So that's a lot of heat. So once it's on, it will be like 10 minutes and the whole room is a, a bad temperature. Faster here, easy to control and zone it. You, it most radiators have their own valve. You don't want to heat the room, shut it off, and that, that's it. And it's steam, there's no water, all the water pretty drop down, so there is no fear of freezing that pipe. You just leave it as is. So that's really an advantage. Again, for the steam, also you want, uh, for the, some people have the mistake of that valve, they open it halfway, I want a little heat, no, it doesn't work this way. Either completely open or completely closed. This advantage is again leaks because we're building a lot of pressure, a lot of heat compared to water. Things were, tend to wear out and leak a little bit. Sometimes it also leaks from the vent. Um, rust is a big issue. Every uh, couple of months, you might want to flush the system. A lot of oxidation happens because we have a lot of heat. And also, calcium buildup happens because of the salt in the water, and we have a lot of temperature. So you need to flush the system periodically. It's kind of like a power plant, you have to do a blow down. But for here, it's not gonna be as much, at least once a season. And you'll see the water comes out really dirty, all the dust. Rust, and it will accumulate. So it uh, it can it causes rust. There is some pressure, as I told you, said it's dangerous because there is pressure buildup. So there are some kind of ways to prevent this from happening. <coughs> How would you build pressure? No water. No water. That's the biggest thing ever. No water. So if you have no water, you're gonna build the pressure. That's an issue. Second, that's why they have something called low water cutoff. That's very important. Uh, what else? We also have a safety valve. If it exceeds a certain pressure, it will pop. They do work, and they do need to be changed and tested every season. Again, not a lot of people do the testing and maintenance every year. I have friends who are convinced, they know me, I tell them, listen, once they need to do a tune-up and check, nobody does it. And, uh, can't force you to do it. So it's uh, it's not that that much. I mean, you have to flush the water, look at the nozzle, look at the chamber, and do the maintenance. Uh, again, it's human nature. Usually, if things are working, we're not gonna care. Yeah, but it, you're paying for it somehow. Leak pressure. Uh, the large mattress radiator. They call it the mattress radiator because it looks like a matrix and has sections. They're very large, so sometimes they take a lot of space depending on how much heat. You want to put it, and they are really hard to fit in a bathroom or a kitchen. So <coughs> if you have a small bathroom, this is really like a lot, a lot of space. <coughs> so there is something also called. Okay, I show it here. 
the heart of the loop. So this is an example of a small steam system. And this is also a one pipe system. Meaning, the steam goes into the radiator and comes back in water in the same pipe. It's pretty cool. So the pipe has water and steam in the same time. It comes all the, all the way to the system, it accumulates here, and we have this hard for loop. The hard loop is just a prevention method to make sure that the boiler has water at this level. Why is it called hard for loop? Based on something was created insurance. in Hartford. Yeah. Oh, What's okay. also is in Hartford? Insurance company. Yeah. Insurance company. Hartford is the insurance capital of the world. All the insurance companies in there. So the Hartford loom was invented by a lawyer actually. An engineer, an electrician. He was sick of filing insurance claims for boilers. So he did some investigation. He found out that most boilers break and explode because of low water. <coughs> and the low water happens not because of the make of water is because sometimes there's a blowdown steam, a bell of steam, and the water is pushed out into the system. So this, in this way, with this loop, kind of like a siphon, same thing that you have in your toilet, it always has water in it, why? Right? Because there's a loop. So if we, he said, if we put that loop in there, we'll guarantee that the water will come back at the same level, using the siphon and vacuum. So that was his idea, and it became the hot it became standards now in every boiler. Is that yeah. sideways S-track? Yeah. Put a, put a uh, yeah. Oh, I get rich then. It is. He's a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lawyer. So it, it did. Uh, it is named the Hartford Loop, and it's a lot of. I saved a lot of the industry, a lot of money, and uh, again, didn't come from an engineer or from a technician. Somebody said, "Okay, why is there running out of water? Why do I keep doing this?" And this is what happened. So this is called the Hartford Loop, and basically just to maintain the amount of water in the in the boiler in case of a blowdown or build-up pressure. You get the water pushed out, and then it come, uh, and then it come back. Okay, uh, so this is the one pipe system, and this is the two pipe system. Why do you think we have one pipe and two pipe? If the one pipe is doing the job, the one pipe is better because again, it's uh, eight less piping. Um, eight less piping, and one, the one pipe is better than having two. Two pipes has advantages because we can have radiators in series, and also it, uh, it reduces the issue of water hammering, because the water does not mix steam. So with this system, the water and steam are in the same pipe. Can you visualize that? Yeah. So, so, all, so all the return is water. Yeah, but it's all, all in the same place. So the water comes yeah. here, and steam is here. But they're close in heat, so that doesn't get the hammer, right? That's one thing, and also the pitch is very important, and the flow is very important, and the speed is that. So many things are important. So you don't want to have over, if you have too much water, you're going to get the, the knocking and the, the hammer. And what happens with one, one, uh, one pipe is uh, if this orifice gets some kind of buildup, you'll get some hammering mm -hmm. and knocking, and it's very annoying and scary. And so you need to maintain that orifice very well. And both of them require air vents. So you always have, have air vents because once you stop the system and you lose all the water and steam, air has to come in, otherwise you're gonna have vacuum. If you have vacuum, that's a problem. So you wanna have vacuum, so you're gonna have an air vent to suck air in. So when you have air and try to pump steam, steam is heavier than air. Or lighter, what do you think? It's heavier. Huh? It's, it's heavier than air. Nah, it's lighter. It is? It's gonna go up and push this, the, the, the air out. <coughs> and it has more power and energy in it, so they're gonna push the air out, it's gonna come out, and uh, sometimes the air vents get stuck, that's why when you have issues, and if the system is air bound, if, the, if you can't get rid of the air, what will happen? You may not get steam. Steam traps on both? Huh? Are there steam traps on both? Uh, steam traps, usually you find those in a uh, two pipe system, and you don't find steam traps a lot in a reservation, mostly for power plants. Okay. Wood stove. Those are available. They're convenient, depending on the space that you have. I would love to have one in my house. It's very nice. I mean, uh, the feeling of having 
Learning wood for fire is really nice. Mm. It smells good too. Yeah, it looks nice. Mm. Looks very old fashioned. Mm. Clean. Yeah. So I said some people actually you can put a pot of water here to the heat to speed up the heat. And a lot of people also put the steam, they put a pot of water to keep the water and moisturize the atmosphere. So this is a, a wood stove, it also has the intake and outtake. It's can some of them are sealed, some of them are not sealed. Yeah, that was, was that that? Okay. So if you if it's not sealed probably it's drawing air from the from the room. Exactly. And you have to crack a window, otherwise it's not getting any air. So make sure you get the right amount of air. And uh, again, there are many ways to make the most out of this heat. Usually it's made out of very thick metal for thermal mass. And I've seen ones that have rods going through the vent all the way to the floor, second floor. So it will spread out more heat and you can heat the floor. So you can make the most out of this heat eventually. And the condensation coming out of food is not as bad as coming from diesel, so you can't have a heat exchanger that will pull out all the heat. Yeah. Does the design on the top of the chimney prevent backdraft? Yeah. From coming in? It does. It does. Okay. And uh, if you see it's going through the wood, in some states that's illegal. They don't want to go through the roof of the material because it gets too hot and they're afraid it's going to burn out the stuff. And there's some insulation here. So going through here is, a, is an issue. That's why we have this big uh, like, kind of like a heat sink. Yeah, yeah. something to insulate the heat, but that's something you have to be mindful of. And uh, they're getting more and more efficient. And depending on the space and availability of wood, probably you can you can use that. Any questions about heat? No. So this is going to be our uh, basis of the project. We'll do some kind of heating for the house. Uh, we'll, this is, we have four weeks to finish it. We'll start Friday. We'll do some calculation for the stuff. Mm -hmm.